Now, there's only one question, and that is to prove that the communist regime is directly controlled by the American Jacob Schiff and London Rothschild masterminds of the Great Conspiracy. A little later, I will provide that proof that will remove even a remote doubt that the Communist Party, as we know it, was created by those masterminds, capitalists, if you will note, that Schiff, the Warburg, and the Rothschilds planned and financed the entire Russian Revolution, also the murder of the Tsar and his family, and that Lenin, Trotsky, and Stalin took their orders directly from Schiff and the other capitalists whom they supposedly are fighting. Now can you see why the vile Earl Warren and his equally vile co-Supreme Court justices issued that infamous and treasonous desegregation decision in 1954? It was to aid and abet the plot of the Illuminati conspirators to create tension and strife between Negroes and whites. Can you see why the same Earl Warren issued his decision prohibiting Christian prayers and Christmas carols in our schools? It was done to destroy Christianity. Can you see why Eisenhower, despite all the rigid constitutional prohibitions, sent federal troops into a southern state to enforce the desegregation decision? Why Kennedy did likewise? And can you see why Johnson and 66 senators, despite the protests of 90% of the American people, voted for the Consular Treaty? which opens our entire country to Russian spies and saboteurs. All those 66 senators are 20th century Benedict Arnolds. It is up to you and you, all of the American people, to force Congress, our elected servants, to haul in those American traitors for impeachments, and that when proven guilty, they all be given the punishment prescribed for traitors who aid and abet our enemies. And that includes the forcing of rigid investigations by Congress of the CFR and all their fronts, such as the ADL, the NAACP, SNCC, and such Illuminati tools as Martin Lucifer King. Such investigations will completely unmask all the leaders in Washington and the Illuminati and all their affiliations and affiliates as traitors carrying out the Illuminati plot. It will completely unmask the United Nations as the intended crux of the entire plot and force Congress to take the U.S. out of the U.N. and hurl the U.N. out of the U.S. In fact, it will destroy the U.N. and the entire plot. Before I close this phase, I wish to reiterate and stress one vital point, which I urge you to never forget if you wish to save our country for your children and their children. Here is the point. Every unconstitutional and unlawful act committed by Woodrow Wilson, by Franklin Roosevelt, by Truman, Eisenhower, and Kennedy, and are now being committed by Johnson, is exactly in line with the Illuminati conspirators' centuries-old plot outlined by Weishaupt and Albert Pike. Every vicious decision issued by the traitorous Earl Warren and his equally traitorous Supreme Court justices was directly in line with what the Illuminati blueprint required. That all the treason committed by our State Department under Rusk and earlier by John Foster Dulles and Marshall, also all the treason committed by McNamara and his predecessors, is directly in line with that same Illuminati blueprint for the takeover of the world. Also the amazing treason by various members of our Congress especially by the 66 senators who signed for the Consular Treaty, has been committed on orders from the Illuminati. Now I will go back to Jacob Schiff's entrapment of our money system and the treasonous actions that followed. It will also reveal the Schiff Rothschild control of not only Karl Marx, but of Lenin, Trotsky, and Stalin who created the revolution in Russia and set up the Communist Party. It was in 1908 that Schiff decided the time had come for his seizure of our money system. His chief lieutenants in that seizure were Colonel Edward Mandel House, whose entire career was that of chief executive and courier for Schiff, as I shall show. 
Bernard Baruch and Herbert Lehman. In the fall of that year, they assembled in secret conclave at the Jekyll Island Hunt Club, owned by J.P. Morgan at Jekyll Island, Georgia. Among those present were J.P. Morgan, John D. Rockefeller, Colonel House, Senator Nelson Aldrich, Schiff, Stillman and Vanderlip of the New York National City Bank, W.N.J. Seligman, Eugene Meyer, Bernard Baruch, Herbert Lehman, Paul Warburg, in short, all of the international bankers in America, all of them members of the hierarchy of the Illuminati's great conspiracy. A week later, they emerged with what they called the Federal Reserve System. Senator Aldrich was the stooge who was to railroad it through Congress. But they held that railroading in abeyance for one chief reason. They would first have to plant their man, an obedient stooge, in the White House to sign the Federal Reserve Act into law.